Welcome to the DTC's online tutorial of the Containerized End-to-End -end Numerical Weather Prediction System. In this presentation, I'll provide a brief introduction to the project, the technologies leveraged in this system, and the motivation for standing up this framework. So first off, why is numerical weather prediction so important? Many careers in meteorology and earth sciences involve numerical models in some way. It could be as simple as just using model output, or as complex as developing and maintaining an NWP system. But even if we are simply viewing and interpreting model output, you can also gain a deeper understanding of how to use that data simply by having a better grasp on the processes that produce that data. Learning about NWP in a theoretical sense can be difficult. Hands-on experience is an effective learning tool, bringing theoretical concepts to life in tangible ways, and it's a resume builder, giving undergraduates and graduate students alike a real desirable skill for future jobs or academic work. Simple models such as CM1 or even 2D solvers can accomplish much of this, but practical applications with a real weather prediction model in a real world setting are much, much better at fostering the connection between model products that we use and the processes that create them. And finally, when we refer to NWP, we're not just talking about model integration. We're also talking about the processes from pre-processing and data simulation to model output, visualization, and verification. Any part of the system can be focused in on and expounded upon in great detail. So this NWP workflow can be useful for a wide variety of focuses in the atmospheric sciences. So NWP is important, but there are also problems with NWP too. Even today, a decent sized WARF forecast with realistic results is unlikely to run on your average desktop or laptop. Compute resources on the scale needed to run dozens of full resolution WARF forecasts are hard to justify at most institutions especially when they would go underutilized the majority of the time. In addition, the technical skills and time needed to design, install, and troubleshoot a full NWP system cannot be overstated. So these are the problems we're trying to solve. We put NWP in software containers that allow you to move software between different machines without having to reinstall all of the individual components. And we put these containers on the cloud because they have essentially infinitely scalable resources for relatively low costs that are accessible to everyone. So here are the specific technologies that we leverage to accomplish these goals in this tutorial. First, we have cloud computing, and we use Amazon Web Services, or AWS, for this framework. Then there's software containerization, and here we use Docker and Singularity. And then we have numerical weather prediction components. We include pre-processing, data simulation, weather modeling, post-processing, verification, and visualization. And we'll go into more details about each of these topics in the next slides. So first, what is cloud computing? The cloud is really just other people's computers that they let you rent. So it's obviously more complicated than that, but essentially that's it. Cloud computing is just a service that lets you borrow computers that are owned and maintained by others for your own work. Why should we use cloud computing? Well, computers, especially very big ones, are expensive to buy and maintain, and renting them is cheaper and easier. The cloud allows you to rent compute resources, including compute power and disk storage, and access those resources quickly over the internet through an SSH connection. You can access as many resources as you want almost instantly and shut them down when you're done, so you're only charged for the compute time, storage, and bandwidth that you're using. As mentioned before, we are using AWS in this tutorial for our cloud service provider. But there are other cloud service providers as well, like Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud. 
Now let's talk about software containers. First, what is container software? As briefly mentioned before, examples of container software that we use in this tutorial are Docker and Singularity. A container is a self-contained box that allows you to essentially build software once and run it anywhere, as long as you have the software to run that box. In this case, that software is Docker or Singularity. These container software bundle all the things that are required to run an application, the operating system, library dependencies, and additional software like Wharf. A software container is similar to a virtual machine, but it is lighter weight and very portable. Basically, you can see the container on the left has one less layer in the software stack, and that means less overhead in memory and computing power, while still maintaining the almost complete portability of a virtual machine. So why should we use containers? First, numerical weather prediction systems are really complicated. There are many different components, and most of these components have multiple programs. Each of those programs depend on many other programs or libraries. So compiling and setting up any one of these components has a chance to go horribly wrong. This schematic is just one example of the series of dependencies in the NWP system. Even ignoring all the other end-to-end -end components and just focusing on WARF, you can see that the WARF system is composed of multiple executables. And the main executable is dependent on multiple libraries, and even those libraries have multiple dependencies. So things can get complicated really fast. Containers mean that someone still has to do all the work to get those things set up, but only once. Everything that is required for an NWP system can be packaged into isolated components that are ready for development, shipment, and deployment to many different computing environments. And these software containers should always run the same, regardless of where it is deployed.